everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. So I'm hoping the lighting and camera setup are okay for you. I'm actually in my wet area craft room this morning and I've bought out some of the chipboard pieces that we cut and punched holes in and I'm, I'm going to paint those and I've decided to do it out here using some of the leftover chalk paint that I created to make my or sorry to paint my set of shelving that I have in my craft space so when I saw the digital kits from Junk with Steph that I'm using for my design team project I actually thought about these uh, sorry I thought about this chalk paint and this was actually the process that I had in mind so it was a combination of things that I had left over in my space basically and I was inspired by the kits when I saw them so now I haven't actually had this paint open since I finished painting my set of shelving so I don't know I should have grabbed a paddle pop stick or something to stir it with I'm just looking around to see what I might have and I've just got it in a little clip container with a piece of glad wrap over the top just to try and seal it. Um, just looking. Uh -huh. So I do have the paddle pop stick here that I use to mix my paint and, uh, sorry, my water. And you can see the... It's got vintage photo in it. You can see the vintage photo is sitting on the top. Um, I use this stick to mix the powder and water to put in my chalk paint. So I'm just going to give this a quick stir. It is quite flaky around the outside, just where it's dried. So trying not to pop that in my paint I will link the video below where I explain I have got a little piece there that's fallen in where I explain what I did with my I feel like this would probably possibly mix back in again but I'm not sure so yes where I explain what I did with my cupboard and this paint. So I've made my own chalk paint. Um, I cannot think of what the powder is called that I've used to mix into the paint, but it's kind of like one step away from gesso, I feel. Now this is the, the same brush. So I've got paint all over me already. This is the same brush that I used to do my cupboard. I've rinsed it out and I'm not sure how it will go, but I was just like I've already used it for this mix so and I'm just going to paint all over I will probably have to give this a couple of coats so they are a little bit fiddly but I think it will be worth it. I'm not too worried about precision. I do want to try not to get too much paint in that hole. And I'm just going to see if I can do the edges. Again, I'm not worried too much about them being perfect because I do have something in mind for that. But this will partly seal that chipboard too. Okay, so one done. Well, I do want to do the backs as well. So I will let these dry on this side before I turn them over. I'm sorry if you can hear a humming in the background. I've actually, I've got a little heater running. I'm hoping it's not making too much background noise.
these don't actually have an orientation so this effectively may become the back and the opposite side may become the front And I'm just using my baking paper underneath. It's relatively non-stick. When it comes to crafting, which I really like. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I've actually bought my, my craft mat that I was using in my space, my other craft space. I bought that out here. It was getting a little bit tattier, a little bit more worn. So I figured I'd bring it out into my mixed media or wet area and use it out here. And I've got a new one in my other craft space. Not for any other reason than the fact that I figured that in a mixed media room, it would have a little bit more of a workout so I figured the older one was better off out here. Again just touching up the corners. This one's got a little bit of a bend to it. I did try and straighten that out but it hasn't worked so I'm just going to go with it. Okay. Sorry, I know that's off camera, but I'm kind of running out of room here. They seem to be drying rather quickly actually. Now this one has a pencil mark across it. I'm not particularly worried about rubbing that off. I'm just going to paint straight over the top of it. Which means this was probably the one I used as a template to start with. But I've, I've kept one aside of a couple of different not shapes but a couple of different places where I've put holes I've kept them as a template to use on other pieces I found it was a really good idea to have a template so I've kept those for future crafting I figured if I like this process I may want to do more so Something else I was thinking about is that if you don't have leftover chipboard like I do and you wanted to do something similar, you could use um, food packaging either as is or if you were worried about the strength of it, if you wanted something a little bit more solid, um, you could glue a couple of pieces of packaging chipboard together 
and then cut your shapes out of that so and I do wonder if some of these will be a little bit thick so I have considered making some out of the packaging paper but I do have quite a few of these scraps so for me this was about using the scraps that I had We'll see how adventurous I get once I've done these. Just trying to make sure there's not too much paint in the, the holes that I've punched. And you can see a small amount of this paint is going to go a really, really long way. So I would get a ton out of the quantity of paint that I have left over, which, goodness me, is possibly maybe a couple of cups worth of paint. Um, like I barely have to put any on here and it's just... The coverage is really thick, which I love. Okay, this is the last one that I have out here, so... Just finishing that off. Okay, so I'm, oops, I've missed the big one. Okay, I'm going to leave those to dry. I'm going to do two coats all over. So I still have one coat to do on the top there. And I will do two coats on the back. Um, I won't show you the whole process because it's, it's fiddly and it's not very interesting. But you can see that quite a few of them have started to dry. They won't take very long, I don't think. So... I'm going to continue with those, but there is something else that I want to show you. So I'm going to leave these to dry and we will pop back to start part two of this video. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I'm back again. I'm in my other craft space now and I've set up ready to start painting some more of these pieces. I'm going to go ahead and paint some more of my little chipboard pieces. Since I did the last section of this video, I have been back and I have done another coat over that first coat of paint that I did on those. And I set up to put my first coat on these and I got a phone call. So I just took a wet paper towel. Now I'm going to use gesso. I will show you. So this is the gesso that I use. It's Deriven and I think I 
purchased it from Spotlight quite some time ago. Um, and I popped a little bit of that gesso onto my tile ready to paint these and I received a phone call. So while I took the phone call, I covered it with a piece of wet paper towel just to keep it, the moisture in. And I thought I would show you that. So I'm just going to peel that away. And you can see I've got a little bit on the paper towel here. Now my brush is very stiff at the moment. So I'm hoping it becomes a bit more pliable as I start using it. And I'm just going to gesso the top. And again with these pieces I will probably do two coats all round. And I will do some of it with you. But I will probably finish them off camera. I think it's time to clean my brush actually it's very stiff just trying to think I think I was mod podging with it last this brush is kind of a all-purpose brush I tend to use it for lots of different things whoops and on my table in front of me I have laid out another piece of baking paper to sit these on while they dry okay so same process as I did with the chalk paint just over the top and all around the edges they should dry relatively quickly I know my others did so Now I'm trying both because, well partly because my chalk paint has the vintage photo in it and I'm not sure for the sake of my design team project that it will work. I feel like it will but I'm not sure. So I wanted white and I felt like gesso and chalk paint are very similar in consistency I feel. So rather than making a white chalk paint because I have so much of the other, I decided I would try gesso. And gesso is something that most crafters have on hand. So if you don't have chalk paint and you want to try this process, I thought I would make them using something that you would have readily available. So, And sometimes it's just fun to experiment, which is kind of what I'm doing. Just playing. Okay. So I may continue with these and I may just speed you through at double time rather than me chatting about nothing while I'm doing this. So just remembering I'm going to do a coat, let it dry, do another coat, exactly the same, let it dry and then I will turn them over and do the backs. So, and then when I pop back while these are drying, I'm hoping I can make a start on my cover. Okay, so I will speed it up now and I'll see you when I'm done.
Okay, I'm just going to leave my paper towel over the top of that little bit of gesso. I don't know whether it'll be usable when I come back to do my next coat, but they are drying fairly quickly, so... Okay, so I'm leaving these to dry. I will just show you what we've done. They are our pieces there. I'm going to leave them here to dry and I will continue painting them um, as they're ready, but I probably won't walk you through the rest of the steps. So another coat of gesso on the top, two coats on the back, the same as the ones that I'm doing with the chalk paint. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you in the next part of the process. Happy crafting, everybody. Stay inspired. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.